Welcome back to another video in this create a RESTful API with Node.js series. In this video, we'll do two things. We'll have a look at how we can extract the request body of an incoming request, like let's say for a post request. And we'll also have a look at how we can handle course errors. Now for that, we'll also see what course actually means and then how we can handle such errors. So let's dive into both topics in this video. Let's start by extracting request bodies. For that, I quit Nodemon for a second and I will install another package. With npm install dash dash save to all the store entry in package.json and the name of the package is called body dash parser. Now, as the name suggests, we can use this package to parse the body of incoming requests because it's not nicely formatted and easily readable by default in Node.js. And we can then use that data. And body parser does not support files, for example, but it does support URL encoded bodies and it also supports JSON data. So if we receive a post request that contains JSON data. Now to use that, URL at uh, that body parser, we should go to app.js and there at the top, let's uh, first of all import it. I'll name this body parser and I will require it from body dash parser like this. Then I will apply it to my incoming requests. We already use the logger middleware, Morgan. Right after it, I'll use my body parser middleware. And now the body parser middleware there actually needs some additional information. Which kind of bodies do you want to parse? First, I want to parse URL encoded bodies. And there we should pass a JavaScript object where we configure this type of parsing. And there we should set extended to either true or false. True allows you to parse extended bodies with rich data in it. I will set it to false to only support simple bodies for URL encoded data. More interesting to us here, however, is the following body parser, which I'll apply thereafter, JSON, as a method, but without arguments. And a link to this package with more information on it and all the configuration you can pass can also be found in the video description. So this will now extract JSON data and makes it easily readable to us. The same for URL encoded data. We can now use this in our routes, like here for products. When we post a new route or a new product, excuse me, we could create a new product as a JavaScript object, maybe with a name. And I want to get that name from the incoming request. And with body parser, there will be a body property where I then can extract different properties depending on which data I received. So let's say I expect to get a request body which has a name property. Then I could extract it like this. And how do I know if I have such a property on the incoming request? Well, we as an API creator either are the user of the API anyways, or if we intend to publish our API to third parties, we should set up a documentation where we clearly state which data our different API endpoints need to work correctly. And this is also what you will see for public APIs. They always have a documentation where they say, hey, for a post request to this resource, we need this data and you will get back a response with this data. So here, let's say we expect a name and let's say we expect a price request body price. And to confirm that I got this, I will add a created product property to my response JSON and simply pass this product object along. So that is my data for creating a product. Now for creating an order, I'll do the same. I'll create my new order object. And there, let's say we would have a product ID and I would get this too from request body product ID and then maybe we have a quantity, request, body, quantity, something like that. And here I will also return my order in the order property of the response JSON data. Now with that, let's first of all run npm start to bring up that server again. And then let's try it out by posting to products and to orders. 
So here, first of all, I'll post to slash products. And now we need to send a body to see something. So in Postman, you can go to body here. Then you can simply switch between different types of body. I will choose raw. And now with raw, I can go to the dropdown and pick JSON. So now here we can create a JavaScript object, which should be our JSON data I want to send. There I want to set a name like Harry Potter 5. And keep in mind for products, we also extracted the price. So I also get the price here. And we can discuss if it makes sense to receive the price from the user who may alter the request. But this is not the final state of the API, no worries. So here the price could be $12.99. Let's now hit send. And we get this strange error. Now what's wrong here? Well, what I'm sending here is not valid JSON data. For valid JSON data, we must only send string data. So we should enclose the property names between double quotation marks and also the price. And now if we try this again, we indeed get back handling post requests to slash products and the created product with the data we submitted. Now let's try the same for orders. There, I, if you have a look at the URL or at the route, I should say, we extract product ID and quantity. So let's pass these two parameters or these two information pieces. Product ID can be this ID and the quantity, quantity could be, let's say 10. And now if I hit send, we see that this was successfully created and we get back that data. So parsing the body does work. So we made sure that we can parse our request body. Let's now work on something else, fixing course errors. We haven't seen any, but you, if you have worked on any single page application, anything like that, you might already have seen these course errors. They look like this, simply search for course error on image search, no access control allow origin header is present on the requested resource. This is what you typically see then. Now, what does this mean? What are course errors about? What is course to begin with? Course stands for cross origin resource sharing. And the idea behind it is pretty good. It's a security concept. We have a client and a server. And if both are coming from the same server, so if the client, if the page you're on is served by the server you're sending a request to, let's say you have a traditional web app where you get back HTML pages and on one page you use jQuery Ajax or some other Ajax library to send some data or get some data, if they're on the same server, then this will just succeed because then you're trying to access resources on your server from that server. Now for a RESTful API, this is never the case. Instead, client and server typically have different URLs, different origins, and even the port number on localhost is considered a different origin if it's not the same. In this case, trying to make a request to a resource on the server will fail because as a default, the browser is saying, it doesn't make that much sense for you to get something from that server. It's not the server you are coming from. Now that's a security concept, but for RESTful APIs, we wanna allow this access because RESTful APIs are meant to be consumed by other clients, by other servers, and not just by the server the API runs on. That wouldn't make it that useful because keep in mind, we don't serve an application from that API, we just serve data. Therefore, we can overcome this, we can basically disable this mechanism by sending some headers from the server to the client that essentially tell the browser, which is running our client application, which tell the client, yeah, it's okay, you can have access. And then the browser says, okay, so here you go. So what we have to do now is we have to ensure that we send the right headers back. And how do these headers look like? Let's go to the app.js file. And there I want to basically append the headers to any response we send back. So we should do it before we reach our routes here because there we do send back a response. 
So before the routes, I'll add another middleware with app use to funnel every request through it. And there I'll use my arrow function, which receives the request, the response, and this next object. And in there, I now want to add some headers to the response. This will not send the response, it will just adjust it so that wherever I do send a response, it has these headers. So with response header, I add a new header. And then the first header I need to set is access-control-allow-origin. Remember that course error message? It said no access control allow error origin header is present. Well, now we set it, so it will be present. This header also needs a value and the value can be star to give access to any origin. You could also restrict it. You could say only HTTP mycoolpage.com should have access. But typically for RESTful APIs, you give access to any client because you rarely want to narrow it down to one. Now the next header or one more header we need to add is access-control-allow-headers to essentially define which kind of headers we want to accept. So which headers may be sent along with the request. You can also set this to a star to allow anything. You could also set this to origin, x requested with and maybe content type and maybe accept and maybe also authorization so that all these headers can be appended to an incoming request. I will now also check if the incoming request method, method is a property which gives us access to the HTTP method used on the request, is equal to options. A browser will always send an options request first when you send a post request or a put request. This is basically something you can't avoid where the browser sees if he can make this request, if he's allowed to do so. So you send an options request first. For this case, I also want to add an additional header where I tell the browser what he may send. So I will add access-control-allow-methods and set this to put, post, patch, delete, oops, patch, delete, not exiting out of the string, so like this, get basically all the requests or the HTTP verbs you want to support with your API. Now, if we have such an options request, I also already want to return response status 200 with a JSON data load or payload, but that actually is an empty object. Because here I don't need to go to my routes because the options request is just for finding out which options we have. And by sending back a response where we add all these course headers, we do provide such an answer. For other methods, only the first two headers are attached and that's all we need. And thereafter, the request may continue. So that's the idea behind this setup. It ensures that we prevent course errors. Now, one question remains. Why did we never encounter course errors when we used Postman? The answer is, Postman is just a testing tool. It's not a browser. And keep in mind that I said that course errors are a security mechanism enforced by the browser. That's why you can override them with headers. The browser then knows to ignore that. Well, Postman just doesn't care. It's there for testing. This also has one other important implication. If you ever thought about protecting your API against unwanted access, by restricting the allow origin to maybe your own domain only, this will work for web pages. Other web pages won't be able to use your API with that. But you can still get access with tools like that. So it's not really a protection mechanism when it comes to that, but you can ensure that other web pages can't access your API. Still, here I provide access to everyone. And with that setup, 
we shouldn't encounter any course errors when we connect a single page application or some other client to our API. Now with that, we added course error handling, but right now we would always block our incoming request. We also need to call next at the end of our middleware if we're not returning immediately due to us getting our options request so that the other routes can take over. So with that, let's make sure to also start Nodemon and it should then automatically restart. You can still send requests and you could now also send them from single page applications and so on. Now with that, we added body parser, we're handling course errors. Now I'd say in the next video, it's time to finally add a database and then do some more useful things on our server.